Draw your last pathetic card so I can end this, Yugi. My grandpa's deck has no pathetic cards, Kaiba. But it does contain... The Unstoppable Exodia! Impossible! I've assembled all three, five special cards. All five three, pieces of the puzzle. Exodia! Uh, it's not possible! No one's ever been able to call him... Exodia! Obliterate! Hey brawlers, I'm Mr. Huda, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to win with Peter Pants. Pants lost a lot of his versatility, with Prince Arthur and Hippocampus moving to tier 4, as well as Adventurer being taken out a few patches ago. Nowadays, he only has two viable ways to win a game. He can cheat out early high tier treasures with a combination of treasure map, runestones, and blind mice, or he can assemble hatball with forking rod or double spells. Since Pants relies heavily on treasures to win, it's important to play for your outs, and always give yourself multiple avenues to obtain these treasures. I'll be showing you how to create and stick to multiple plans to win from the start of the game. These plans will have a focus on stabilizing first, before focusing on endgame goals. Once Hatball is obtained, I'll be teaching you advanced tricks to maximize its usage and secure the win. I hope you enjoy! Because Pants only has access to tier 2 and 3 units and spells, his resources are pretty limited. But, because he only has access to these two tiers, his limited resources come in an abundance, making early strategies and planning fairly consistent. When planning out your game, you don't just want to accomplish A, B, C, and D all at once. You want to prioritize what's most important first, and accomplish that before moving on to other plans. What I mean is, Despite my end plan being to obtain hat, ball, and fork, I don't want to put the cart before the horse and start grabbing my mage units to accompany my spell strategy. What's most important is to first stabilize my board to protect my HP and give me time to assemble these treasures as well as have a strategy to obtain these treasures more efficiently. Pants has access to three strong economic units right from the start of the game. Prized Pig, Lucky, and Fiona. Using these, you can grab more units to constantly hunt down tier 3 triples. He also has access to Princess White, a unit that scales whenever you buy dwarves, making this the perfect unit to go after to acquire treasures from dwarves efficiently. With an extra 2 gold from Pig and a Princess White in shop, my plan is already coming together. I buy out all the tier 2 units, then sell chicken to guarantee Eeny Meeny to hit Princess White, which nets me plus 1 gold. I prioritize the dwarves, overtaking Fiona for more economy. I already have Pig and I want to begin planning my first tier 3 triple targets with Pig and Dwarves so I can get more gold and more stats on white while hunting tier 3 treasures. Since I have limited board and hand space, I try to keep 2 to 3 triple targets in mind at all times when hunting for Hatball. Any more and my bench will get too cluttered. I cast Genie for 2 spell procs on Cinderella's quest and it gets me a Shadow Assassin for only 1 gold. I pass on the tier 2 pair but decide to add Lucky to my triple target list since Dwarves give stat value while attempting to find Hatball. I roll and pass on Pig for now, in favor of finding Dwarves more quickly. My last shop gives me the third tier 3 Dwarf option in Tweedle, which I sell for. I now have two sources of extra economy, with a growing white to help me stay strong. I pick up my reduced cost creeper and grab the pig pair now that I have more gold to look for the triple. I'm also against an early ghost this turn, which makes the second pig way more valuable. I pick up chicken and roll into a free spell to upgrade Cinderella. I choose Hermes boots as the best treasure to help me win fights. I decide now is a good time to try to get Brave Princess going because I have Hermes boots so she always attacks first, and against this early ghost, I'm likely to get a free slay. 
Chicken and Cinderella are very efficient treasure targets to try to get rune stones or noble steed to cheat out higher tier treasures. Chicken costs 6 to triple, and if you miss these two treasures, you can skip picking a treasure, then sell it to get your 6 gold back. Cinderella is even more efficient, because she only costs 2 gold to upgrade, and can sell for plus 1 gold value if you miss the treasures you want. Now that I have my board stable with good extra economy, it's time to start gathering these treasures. I pick up a Shadow Assassin pair, then roll into a doubly pair. In hindsight, I should have sold Tweedle instead of Lucky. I wanted to keep Creeper as a tree target for Hatball later, and keep Cinderella as a True Love's Kiss or Mixa Whistle target. I roll into the Pig Triple, and decide on taking Telltale Quiver as the strongest treasure for fights with my two ranged units. I sell for the Creeper pair, and cast Candy Rain for good buffs on all the units I bought this turn. I now have 3 pairs and Brave Princess and White quests to get tier 3 treasures with. I pick up my Creeper Triple and take Hat first instead of Crystal Ball. While Ball is the treasure that gives more value with Forking Rod, I prefer taking Hat first to use spells for free each turn. I roll into Worm Root and cast it on Shadow Assassin for a nice buff to a ranged unit. I roll into the Shadow Assassin Triple and take Sting to help Brave Princess get her last slay for another treasure. My next shop gives me Blind Mouse, which I decide is worth grabbing now to try to get Forking Rod. I lock my last shop which has my doubly triple, and a good spell cast in True Love's Kiss, to start trying to create upgraded tier 6 units. Despite Pants only having access to tiers 2 and 3, with Blind Mice and Treasure Cheats, you can get Forking Rod pretty consistently, considering there are only 14 tier 4 treasures. Brave Princess finishes her quest, and I pick up Haunted Helm in place of Sting. I grab my doubly triple, and take a useless treasure in place of Hermes Boots. Now that I have Merlin's hat, it's worth True Love kissing upgraded tier 3 units to start assembling tier 6 units. I kiss Brave Princess into a vulture and take a dwarf to upgrade my white. I decide on taking treasure map to either go for forking rod at 4 or a tier 5 or 6 treasure to help stabilize while I continue searching for crystal ball. Now that most of my treasure targets are depleted, I pick up Spellweaver to try to triple and freeze the kiss for next turn. Even if I don't think these treasures are better than my current ones, it's important to pick treasures to thin the tier 3 treasure pool, making Crystal Ball easier to acquire. Even if I replace a tier 3 treasure, that treasure will no longer be in the pool for the rest of the game. I pick up Spellweaver Pair and kiss Vulture again into a Cupid this time. My next shop gives me my triple, and I grab Dracula's Saber as a nice stabilizing treasure to help with fights. Saber is great with triplies and ranged units in the backline. My last shop gives me my blind mice pair, which I'm collecting to search for Forking Rod. I sell for the mouse, and position my three ranged units backline. I need to start looking for more tier 3 targets now, with dwarves being a priority. I'm given my mice triple and get Forking Rod first try. I roll into Lucky for a nice tier 3 target that also buffs my white, and I also pick up my Tweedle pair. Despite having two spell treasures, I'm focusing my gold on getting Ball instead of collecting mages still. I double cast Beauty's influence onto my white and decide not to lock for the Evil Witch pair. Despite me spending so many resources sifting through treasures, I'm still pretty strong on board with white and strong ranged units backline. I pick up Fiona Pear as a decent monster target for Wormroot later. I roll into another Kiss, and use it on my much-loved Cupid, which turns into an Ashwood Elm. I roll for my triples, but don't find much else. With True Love's Kiss and the new mix whistle getting tier 6s with Pants became a lot easier. With old mix whistle Pants could only use it to create tier 4s, but now he can increase the level past tier 4. This is a gigantic buff for Pants, since he's able to cast mix whistle many times throughout the game. I 
I grab my Tweedle triple and decide to skip because my treasures are irreplaceable now. With 6 tier 3 treasures out of the pool, only 8 remain, which makes my chances to get ball a bit under 50% each attempt now. I double cast kiss on Tweedle, which turns into a Lancelot. I roll into my Fiona triple and miss on ball again. With my next treasure targets depleted, I pick up Spellweaver now and search for Lucky or Spellweaver triples. I position an order of attack, with Lancelot in the back, so it can get its quest from Dracula Saber buffs. I skip Lancelot Treasure and don't cast Mixawizzle because this game was played on previous patch, which takes up my spell cast for the turn and can only create tier 4 units with pants being level 3. I find my lucky pair, then find my Spellweaver pair. With more rolling, I triple lucky but miss yet again. After more rolls, I sell and grab my Spellweaver triple but once again miss out on getting Crystal Ball. I double cast Beauty's Influence on Elm and roll for more tier 3 targets, then lock the stack pair for next turn. It's a bit unlucky to not have Hat and Ball by now, which is where my second plan of utilizing White and Kisses to stabilize comes in. I've created a nice cushion of 33 HP to give me more time to assemble Hat, Ball, and Fork. I pick up my stack pair and decide on casting Genie because together with Forking Rod, it counts as 4 spells cast for my weavers. Since I'm against a ghost, I grab chickens, just as a way to focus my gold better for future turns when I need to find ball or cast more spells. I don't plan on tripling it though, as I don't need runestones anymore since I already have Fork. I roll now for tier 3 dwarves or my stag triple, I find the stack triple, and after 11 tier 3 treasures, I assembled Hatball. Now that I've assembled Hatball, let's talk spells. What makes Hatball so potent with Peter Pants is his spell pool lets him cycle spells much easier because they're all very cheap and forkable. With current patch, Pants has 11 targeted spells available to him, with only 15 non-targeted, making it very easy to chain spells together, especially with Forking Rod. Because he only has 26 spells, Chaining Mix a Whistle and True Love's Kiss to cast together becomes very easy, which gives him access to many tier 6 units. You want to make sure you have targets for all your spells at all times. With the current spell pool, you want a Treant, a Monster, and a continuous supply of good and evil units to target with Beauty's Influence and Shard of the Ice Queen. With other heroes, you also want a Prince or Princess for Queen's Grace, but Pants doesn't need to worry about that. I'm rolling now for only targeted spells. Since I'm going off with Hapal so late, I decide not to grab any more mages as they won't get bigger than my current units in time. I cast Flourish on my Elm and mix a Whistle on my hardworking White. Since this is old patch, she can only turn into a tier 4 unit. With current patch, she'd be a tier 5 after mix a Whistle gets 4. And after a second mix a Whistle cast, she'd turn into a tier 6 unit twice, with the first tier 6 being permanent, which means Pants got a gigantic buff. My last board, I decided to grab a tier 2 unit to create more space in the shop before casting Shard. I'll be able to show this tactic off better next turn with more gold in hand. Cast Beauty's Influence, and now that my shop's full, let's talk about the shop space creating tactic. Pants' shop starts with 6 slots. Shops can only hold 7 units or spells at a time, so after casting a spell with Crystal Ball and Forking Rod, 2 spells get added and the shop becomes full. To get maximum value with Hat Ball and Fork, you want to continuously keep your shop slots open to get as many targeted spell casts as possible. What's great about Pants is he's given many tier 2 units to grab for 2 gold and sell later for 1 gold. At the cost of 1 roll, you're guaranteeing yourself extra looks at a spell. With 1 spell cast, it's the same value as a roll, but with extra spell casts, buying and selling the tier cost units can become far more valuable. All I care about now are targeted spells as I have great Treant and monster targets with Ashwood Elm and Medusa or Shadow Assassin.
Down to the 1v1, I continue my search for targeted spells and using my shop space tactic when I have multiple targeted spells for each shop. This game was a great showcase of how to survive with Peter Pants while assembling Hatball Fork Combo by focusing on stabilizing first. I constantly gave myself multiple tier 3 treasure targets at all times to give myself the best outs for getting treasures as fast as possible. After 11 tier 3 treasures, I finally obtained the combo and was able to go off with the few turns I had left to scale over what my opponents were doing. By using Pants' tier 2 and 3 restriction, I was able to efficiently create space in the shop by buying out 2 cost units, giving myself the most spell uses as possible. After this new patch, Pants is close to S tier, since he can utilize Mixa Wizzle way better than I could in this game. He can easily obtain more tier 6 units, and Cat's Call also got moved up a tier, making his targeted to non-targeted spell ratio a little better. And as we watch this final fight, I want to thank you all for watching. Let me know what you liked or disliked about this video in the comments below, or what heroes and strategies you'd like to see in upcoming videos, and I hope to improve and bring more content like this in the future. Hey Brawlers, I hope you enjoyed this in-depth Peter Pants analysis. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my end of October meta analysis and tier list. Also, you can expect to see a batch of Treant games, followed by another analysis of an Apocalypse game for my next videos this week. Thanks for watching.